Middlesex is a 2002 Pulitzer Prize-winning book by Jeffrey Eugenides. In 1960, Callie Stephanides was born in Detroit as a female, and in 1974, he was reborn as a teenage boy. He is 41 years old, intersex, and resides in Germany. At Bithynios, a little town on Mount Olympus close to Bursa in Asia Minor, his grandmother Desdemona was born. Lefty is uninterested in Desdemona's attempts to match him up with females in their village, Leftdemona works in a silkworm cocoonery. After the Turks retake Asia Minor after years of Greek rule, Desdemona and Lefty want to emigrate to the United States through Smyrna. It becomes more and more obvious that the whole city is going to be annihilated, along with all of its Turkish citizens. Desdemona consents to marry Lefty since she is certain they are going to pass away. But, they manage to flee at the last second by feigning French citizenship. They pose as strangers on the ship, go through a phony relationship, and then get married. In order to live with their cousin Sour Melina and her husband Jimmy Zismo, Lefty and Desdemona go to the United States. Lefty is dismissed from his manufacturing job at Ford Motor Company after moving in with a person who has a criminal background. They both inform their spouses of their pregnancies on the same evening. During Prohibition, Lefty begins working with Zismo in the bootlegging trade, while Desdemona gives birth to a son named Milton and Sour Molina gives birth to a girl named Theodora. Without a job, Lefty establishes the Zebra Room, a speakeasy, in his basement. Desdemona accepts a position as a teacher at a Nation of Islam mosque where she demonstrates her silkworm box and teaches the young adherents of the religion how to create silk. While at work, Desdemona is compelled to examine her role as a white person who participated in prejudice. Fard confesses to Desdemona that he faked his own death and is really Jimmy Zismo after a controversy causes him to flee Detroit. The story fast-forwards to Milton and Tessie as young adults during World War II. Tessie is attracted to a young guy called Michael Antonio who is studying to be a priest after Milton seduces her by blowing his clarinet on her body. As Milton joins the Navy, Desdemona is concerned about his safety. Tessie eventually comes to the conclusion that she cannot wed Mike and breaks off the engagement accepting Milton's proposal in its place. They conceive a kid named Chapter 11, and Tessie receives two copies of a recessive gene that has been passed down through her family for more than 200 years and causes intersex disorders. Lefty has a stroke the day Callie is born, which causes him to lose his speech. The 1967 Detroit riot breaks out when Callie is seven years old, and the Stephanides family spends time hiding in the attic. Milton spends the time carrying a pistol while squatting inside the zebra room. Callie sneaks outside with her bike to help her father. Despite the fact that Milton and Callie are secure at this time, a guy tosses a Molotov cocktail into the zebra room. The insurance settlement enables the Stephanides family to purchase a Cadillac and relocate to Gross Point a wealthy suburb, where they reside in an odd home on Middlesex Boulevard. Callie becomes friends with Clementine, her next-door neighbor, and the two girls start experimenting together. After suffering a stroke, Lefty confesses to being Desdemona's brother, but no one believes him. Desdemona decides to spend the next ten years in bed, vowing never to get out. Callie observes that other girls her age have developed breasts and begun their periods while Milton launches a network of hot dog eateries. Due to her social exclusion and Greek ethnicity, she is a student at the exclusive Baker and English School for Girls. Milton undergoes a transformation while at college, embracing countercultural fashion and ideas. Callie has a crush on a student in Mr. Da Silva's advanced English class, who she refers to as the obscure object. 
They become buddies after being cast in a performance of Antigone. Throughout the course of the summer, Callie and the obscure thing become inseparable. Callie meets Jerome, the brother of the object. Their family is meant to return to their ancient village of Bithynios, but the Turkish invasion of Cyprus prevents this. When the object sleeps with Rex Reese, Jerome and Callie have intercourse in the object's vacation home in Petoskey. Soon later, Callie and the object begin having sexual relations together, but they do not explicitly admit it. Callie observes that her genitalia vary from those of the objects, but she is unconcerned by this. Jerome calls Callie a carpet muncher after discovering her having intercourse on the porch. Callie strikes him with a punch and spits in his face before being struck by a tractor as she flees. Callie is rushed to the hospital by the obscure object, and they kiss en route. Callie is brought to New York to meet renowned sexologist Dr. Luce when the medical staff discovers she is intersex. Callie resolves to flee and adopt a male gender identity after realizing that she is more physiologically male than female. She also decides to change her name to Cal. Cal hitches across the nation, picking up sketchy characters, and staying in a park with several young, unemployed deadheads. Milton and Tessie, who are in Detroit, are distressed by Cal's disappearance and look for him. One day, Milton receives a call claiming to be the kidnapper of Cal and demanding a $25,000 ransom. Milton pledges to pay it right away. In Bob's sex club, 69ers, Cal appears as the deity Hermaphroditus with Zora, an intersex person, and Carmen, a trans woman. When Cal is being detained, Zora is writing a book titled The Holy Hermaphrodite and is proud of her status. As Milton arrives at the predetermined location to give the ransom money, he is horrified to learn that Father Mike is the abductor. Milton discovers during the ensuing automobile pursuit that Mike robbed him and is preparing to leave to Canada. He drives over a bridge and into the Detroit River while attempting to pursue Mike after he crosses the Canadian border. Upon arriving to pick up Cal from San Francisco's prison, Chapter 11 is unexpectedly supportive of Cal's new persona. Desdemona first believes Cal is lefty, and Tessie are both happy to see Cal again. Desdemona exposes the truth that she and Lefty are siblings when Cal confesses that he is intersex and transsexual. In accordance with a Greek custom, which calls for a male relative of the dead to stand guard at the entrance of the home, Cal chooses to remain and prevent Milton's soul from returning. If you have any suggestion of which book I should summarize, please let me know in the comments and if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe.